So the market trading upwards for the second or third session this week. So a lot more positive sentiment creeping in. What's led to that? Um, if you look at the technical side of the market, um, we are basically slightly above the 50-day the, the exponential moving average. And th that should signal um, a short bull run and, or a short uh, run upwards. How far it will go, I'm not quite sure. But the market should head uh, upwards rather choppingly, maybe for the next couple of days. All right, talk to us about the shilling because we are continuing to see shilling weakness persist above 86 shillings today. The central bank again in the market mopping up liquidity, also involved with euro sales. I keep on asking the question, if the strategy is not working, what's the next available option? Um, I guess for the central bank right now, I don't think they really mind um, a, a weak shilling currently. Um, for, for them, what they're really trying to target was the, their policy basically is inflation targeting. So as, as they get into the market to mop up liquidity and, and, and all that stuff, what they're just trying to do is re reduce um, the money that is in circulation by, by, by you know, selling more papers inside. But what they're actually doing is weakening, <laughs> weakening the currency. Um, which for a net importing country like Kenya, whose balance of trade is so skewed towards import, a weak shilling really will not also play into their favor. So they're really trying to, to fight two battles. Uh, do you bring down inflation and let the shilling weaken, or do you strengthen the shilling and let inflation uh, run helter-skelter? Let's talk about what's happening on the equity side. Um, Barclays Bank is up somewhere around 3.7%. We do know that they're having an AGM at the end of the week, and there it's been mooted a proposal for a share split. Yes. Um, I guess basically the share split is just trying to encourage investors to, to participate more in the share. They already have a very large free float, so it's not really trying to improve liquidity. There is enough liquidity in, in the stock. Um, but when, when times are hard, when profits are not growing that much, um, you know, as a managing director of a listed company, you have two things. You are looking at your bottom line and you're looking at your share price. Um, so to try and put some activity on your share price to compensate for maybe the lack of growth on the mm -hmm. bottom line, you do things like splits, rights, dividends, bonuses, and stuff like that. I mean, comparatively speaking, how does Barclays fare compared to some of the other blue chip banks such as Equity and KCB, which tend to also attract retail investors in a way in which a corporate bank like uh, BBK has struggled to do? Um, if, if, if the, the story now ends up going on the, the, the growth prospects. Uh, Barclays looks like they've reached a point where they're, they're not really churning out any new product, not really churning out any new strategy that is exciting the market to know that actually Barclays does have a, a future. Yes, they will maintain the 10% the growth, 5% growth on profits, but they are now comparing to competitors who are still blue chip, like Equity Bank and KCB, who, who are giving you 20% and 30% growth. All right, let's talk about Sassini. It continues to be a favorite on the market today. Uh, I mean, we've seen Sassini trading in the region of uh, 12 shillings to 12 shillings 60. What do you make of the stock, especially because analysts are cautioning us to be a little bit careful when we're looking at agro stocks, given the drought, given the weakness of the shilling? Yeah, it's also a stock that is really <laughs> baffling us at the moment. But the interesting fact about this stock, uh, close to 70% of the shareholding of this stock is held by local corporates. And you'll really wonder why the irrational behavior from them would expect a bit of more <laughs> rationalism when, when they are trading on the stock. Because as you said, uh, their profits only gain because of uh, translation um, gains um, from, from uh, um, translation reserves actually. They revaluated things and uh, normal trick that accountants play. So the business itself is not really growing that much to warrant the price hike that we are seeing on the stock. Mm. All right, Uchumi, for the longest time, they've had their application to relist being reviewed What's the situation? Uh, they should be. They should start trading next week, Tuesday, in the market, um, which is a relief for many investors. But I guess the caution that we have to give to the people that are holding Chumi is, if they flood the market and uh, the market opens with an oversupply position vis-à-vis uh, -vis demand, then they will not realize the gains they might actually realize if they just hold on to their share. 
create um, artificial scarcity of, of the stock mm -hmm. as everyone wants to get into the retail, it will be the only retail chain uh, listed. So people might want to rebalance their portfolios and put some supermarket, hypermarket shares there. So advice is hold on to your shares a month or two time, you reap a good results.